hi welcome to product review by what hour in this video we are going to do the review and test of this uh, 1200 watt 20 ampere uh, power boost converter module that has the input voltage of 8 to 60 volts and the output is 12 to, to 83 volts 1000 watt and output current is 12 0.5 ampere output voltage is 79.6 I set it at 800 watts let's test it and both of these fuses have blown out so smoked I'm going to test it such that we will apply different voltages at the input and different load at the output so we can see a different current how much power this supplies. The input voltage also will be displayed here. The output voltage will be displayed on the screen. Here two of them just died when I was doing the test. Oh, I have these three. They're all dead. Let's get started with this. The item is sold on eBay. I just typed 1200 watt 20 ampere boost and here is what you get it. It shows around $14 with the shipping and different prices. As you can see they have all labeled it with these values which is not true. Let me now explain the module. When you purchase it, they will ship it like this, wrapped in a bubble plastics. We have inputs, input terminal. Because of the amount of current, they put two connectors for positive. These are positive for the input, and these are the negative terminal for the input. So you can put two wires and two wires. This is for positive, and this is for the negative. And then we have two 15 ampere fuses here. They could put 130, but I don't know why, but they put two 15 volts and then we have these two terminals that, that are for the output a little thicker and there is a shunt resistor to measure the current so all the current passes through this and this is a small resistor that the voltage is measured to represent amount of current and this is for selecting the constant current amount of current that you can limit and this is for selecting the output voltage you will adjust output voltage both of these are multi-turn meaning you have to turn it at least five to ten turns before you see an effect initially or at the end once the change starts showing up then it is very precise as as you rotate you will see the change there is another terminal here in case if you are uh, connecting or using it for battery terminal then for battery adjustment or battery protection when the voltage is reduced this can work which I'm not going to look at it because it's just being used as a boost converter and we have a big MOSFET here underneath which I'm going to open and show you with the data sheet so the main inductor is this one these are the four capacitors uh, uh, for the input and these are the three capacitors for the output and when the output load changes sudden changes this this capacitor will handle those small spikes that suddenly changes so this will supply and also the same way for the input so this makes it stable the heat sink is relatively uh, large but we will see that it will heat up uh, quickly there is a terminal for the uh, fan in case if you want to put fan to cool this down there is a terminal so you can connect it let's open the module and see the chip underneath now let's see behind this we have heat transfer sheet for these four components to read them I have to bend them up this one 
NCA60H15 this is a 150 ampere MOSFET in channel enhanced mode power MOSFET B3100G these two are exactly the same this 3100 is a 30 ampere 100 volt so this 30 is voltage 100 is a current this is a barrier shock shot key rectifier two of them are in parallel that's used in this device we have two of this actually and this is the biggest one NEC 85H 211C NCA 85H21TC is the main regulator that is used and this can handle up to 210 ampere but the problem is in this case we need huge heat sink I will provide you the link for this this is ST semiconductor 358 and that is this chip and this is the TL4941 then we have TL494 TL494 pulse width modulation this is a pulse width modulation control circuit and this is XL7005A this is 80 volt back DC to DC converter I will also provide you the link for the main specifications the total output power is 1200 watts or maximum 20 whichever comes first for example if you reach a now it's time to thumb up the video and also hit the subscribe button and here is my setup all the current passes through this 100 uh, ampere shunt resistor see I've connected this thick wire this is 8 WG wires and here I've connected these two wires these two are one is positive the other is negative so these two act as one wire you will see here the input voltage current and power I've also connected this voltage sensing so we don't have any drop uh, on the wire and everything will be compensated let's start our test input voltage is 60 volts and output is as you can see set to 80 volts let's start with the 500 watts here I'm gonna put it in constant power make sure that this never goes above 800 now we have 500 being dissipated from this module input is 60 volts output as you can see here 80 volts and output current is 6.26 ampere here input current is 8 ampere as you can see 8.4 and input power is 508 watts now i'm going 600 watts now output is now as you can see 600 watts voltage stays the same but the current is now increased 7.5 ampere and input is 10.26 so we have to watch for this input that this should not exceed 20 ampere and output input power is 17 watts output is 600 watts And here is the efficiency. So I've set the output to 900 watts. And now it is on. As you can see, 900 watts is being produced by this from 60 volts to 80 volts. The current is, however, 15.67 ampere 
942 watts and 900 watts is at the output and as you can see 42 watt is being dissipated or wasted here as heat and here is the efficiency now I change the output power to 1000 watt let's run it output and output current is 12.5 ampere output voltage is 79.6 we got a little drop here 0.4 volts and input current is 17.47 ampere 1050 watts so 50 watt is being wasted and here is the efficiency so this is one kilowatt now and the module is holding very well separate video tested this 15 watt which was also holding very well this has a fan the link for the video is below the video in the description input voltage is 50 I set it at 800 watts let's test it and as you can see it is holding with 16 ampere at the input and 10 ampere at the output 10 times 80 is 800 watts to 16 we can increase it we can go up to 20 now let's go with 900 watts input is 18.9 that that's reaching very close so at 900 watts at the output we are getting 953 watts at the input here is the efficiency the voltage is holding 400 millivolts drop now let's go with 950 watt input is ampere and that is the maximum so this cannot handle it based on the specification they said if you have if you're using it above 15 ampere then put extra heatsink or fan which this one does not have but it can handle it as you can see 950 watt and 20 ampere and that's the maximum the output is 950 watt at 80 volts input is 1010 watt and here is the efficiency now input is 36 volts output I set it to 600 watts let's see that's the current and we are getting 80 volts the maximum voltage so we are getting 17 with 600 watts output is 600 watts with 80 volts and input is 643 watts here is the efficiency now I set the output to 650 watts let's run it now 650 watts at the output 8.1 ampere and output is 80 input is 19.34 at 698 watts and here is the efficiency and that is maximum output power that you can get with 36 volts input now I set input to 24 volts let's go with a maximum of 400 ampere at the output and it turned off as you can see it was not able to handle it 
because and let me go for let me go for 300 watts now with 300 watts as you can see the voltage has dropped maximum current reached so this this reached to the maximum constant power this is over current protection which it means we have reached above the limit that this is set so let's let's rotate this And here, and here as I adjust the output, you can see the clicks that we are at the maximum. I'm putting my microphone here closer. So you heard the click, so we are at the maximum. Now, what it means is that with this, you cannot get 400 you cannot get even 300 watt at the output and let's go now with 250 watts at the output and the voltage has dropped so input and output voltage is just the same almost with a little drop to input is 24 and output instead of 80 dropped and constant current LED is on over current protection now let me rotate this under voltage protection because the output is less than the input I don't know if the module died or let's in in increase the input first And as you can see, whatever is at the input, you will see it at the, at the output. So I'm not sure if this is dead now. So now we are at 60 volts and we are getting 60 volt, volts output. So this is as if the module is dead. Let's go for under voltage protection. So this is clicking. I'm going backward. not working it's also died it's amazing this is the oh I have these three they're all dead while I was testing the last one that I was hoping will survive also died without even knowing which, at which step but it is dead so so do not try buying this so all the money is wasted now it's time to thumb up the video and also hit the subscribe button and here is the wiring and setup that I've done this is the positive input directly connected to the load the negative is coming through the shunt resistor that can measure up to 100 ampere and that is connected 
on this display. I have separate video explaining this, how to use it. And the uh, negative will come with these two wires. So these two are input for negative and these two are positive input. And the output is connected to electronic load, to my Rigal electronic load. This is the electronic load DL3031. And these are the two terminals that from the circuit will be connected in here. And we will see the voltage here and the current. This is the output voltage of this. As you can see, we are seeing the input voltage and output voltage is displayed in here. And this is the input current and that is the output current. When I change the value, you will see the current in here. Now let me first adjust the input voltage and see what we get at the output. Well, let me reduce it. So input is 8 volts and the output, you're reading it here. Let clockwise rotation is now increasing the voltage. 53 volts now, 55, 65. So we are getting 77 volts, not more, with this 8 volts. Let me increase input voltage and see what we get. So output is stable, not changing, that's good. To set the maximum current, turn this clockwise to the end. So that will set your maximum current. Until you hear click. I can hear click now. Now the input voltage is 9 volts, the output is 12 volts. You can see it consumes 60 milliampere at the moment, even there is no load connected. I'm connecting it with 10 ampere. So this is 10 ampere now being drawn. You can see the input current here, 15.84 ampere. Output is 12 volts. I will increase this current until the voltage drops more than 0 0.5 volts. If this becomes 11.5, still it is passed, but if it, is, if it becomes 11.45 or something, I will call it fail, and that is the current that we see it will fail. So below that will be good. So I'm increasing the current now from here, and you will see it here, 11 ampere, 12, 13, 14, 15 ampere, as you can see input is 25.13 or 1.5, so 25 ampere is the input. The device is getting very hot. The heat sink, not extreme, but I'm holding it a little. Remember th these two are 15 ampere fuses, so 30 ampere in total. And let's go. Sixteen, seventeen. As you can see, seventeen failed, and the voltage is dropping. Sixteen. So this shows stable, but steadily decreasing. Let's see. And as you can see, we are getting twenty-eight ampere at the input, sixteen ampere at the output. And the power is two hundred and fifty watt. Let's check the thermal image. This area is 85, that's the hottest. 
this area. Now the input voltage is 12 volts and output is 15. Let's go with the 10 ampere. Let's go with 10. So 10 ampere, as you can see the input current is 14 ampere. And that's a power, you divide this to this value, you get the efficiency. And let's now increase it. 11, 12, I'm increasing it, 13, 14. Let's go 15 ampere and see. The input current is 21.89, and that is the output power, as you can see, 224 divided, so 224, so 224 divided by 266, 84%, 0.84 efficiency. Now it's way beyond the capacity because they claim that this is 1200 watt. Now let's increase the current to see. And we will watch the voltage. 16, 17, the voltage dropped. So this cannot handle, as you can see, over current protection is not kicked in, which means the current has not been limited by this. So it cannot handle 17, 16 ampere again. So this is now 16 ampere. Now input voltage is 12 volts. Output is 24 volts. Let's go with 10 ampere. As you can see, the input current is 23 ampere, and we are getting 10 ampere at output. The voltage is still steady with a 12 volts input, 24 volts is at the output. Here is the power. Let's increase the current. 11 we're paying attention if it goes more than 0 0.5 volts drop that's we will stop 12 13 14 15 ampere 6 and as you can see that that fuse blow out So these fuses have, have blown out because the input current has increased. So both of these fuses have blown out. I've replaced the fuse. Fortunately I had 15 amperes, so two 15 amperes. Now input is 12 volts, output is another standard voltage, 36 volts with 12 amp. Let's turn it on. It's above the limit. So as you can see it's 40 ampere. Right now it shows a short circuit here and the voltage at the output is dropped completely. Let's put 8 ampere. And as you can see, the input current is now 28 ampere. And this is 30 ampere, so this might be able to handle it, but it will heat up.
now the input is 12 volts and then the output is 50 volts let's go with 5 amp as you can see the input vo uh, current is 24 ampere let's go 6 we will watch this make sure it doesn't exceed 30 ampere now it's a 30 30 is the maximum current input is now 12 volts output is set to 6 60 volts and let's go with 3 ampere input is 17 am ampere let's increase it when I make this 4 ampere the output the input is 23 make it 5 30 ampere that's the maximum it might blow up the fuse but let's check the efficiency 305 watts divided by the input power 375 81% so efficiency has decreased a little input is 12 volts output is set to 80 volts let me go with 3 amp first so output is 80 volts from 12 we get 24 if I go 4 I, I believe it will jump significantly even 32 so let's make it 3.5 so a lot of power being dissipated it doesn't give 80 volts let's turn this off 5 volts drop unacceptable doesn't give you 80 volts let me reduce it now let's go for 75 volt with 3 ampere at the input 3.1 so with 3 ampere we are getting 22.96 let's go with 4 ampere 30 so the voltage has dropped unacceptable So let's make it 70 volts. Twelve volts input, seventy volts output, four ampere at the input. So we are getting almost 30 ampere at the input let's see the efficiency 282 watts at the output 282 divided by input 364 efficiency has decreased 77 
percent it was 83 now it's time to thumb up the video and also hit the subscribe button now let's try a new range of voltages 15 volts at the input output the first standard industry voltage 24 volts i put it at 4 ampere so let's increase it we're watching make, making sure that this doesn't exceed 30 ampere because of the fuse 6 ampere so i'm increasing it here you will watch it in here and i also observe so 8 ampere 9 ampere let's go 10 11 oh sorry 20 13 14 and put this 15 amp the voltage has dropped we don't get any 34 now let's start with 15 volts input 24 volts the industry standard voltage with 10 ampere so we have 10 ampere at the output with 24 volts input is 17 ampere let's increase the current slowly 11 i'm watching this 12 13 14 15 16 so the 16 was okay but if I go 17 the voltage dropped because internally also it has a limit and I set this at a maximum so the current is set here maximum and can supply only output of 16 ampere at 24 volts let me adjust also the output put a little so smoked Had two of them just died when I was doing the test and it's just a waste the main uh, the main transistor the main MOSFET that is this one died this is sold with a shipping around eight dollars but the whole thing is seventeen dollars so why I would buy only the MOSFET so why not buying it, this one again so that's what happened when the first one burned I purchased this one and now this one died I'm not gonna buy another one so I'm just presenting the result so for, for conclusion we could say that this is not trustworthy I definitely not suggest this one to be purchased the amount of current is significantly decreased especially when the input and output voltage for example if the input is 10 volts if you want 60 70 volts it will be like 2 or 3 or maybe maximum 5 ampere so this cannot handle hi higher current and only 16 ampere was possible when you get 12 volts to 15 volts which the input and output voltage are very close and this is not a good design not trustworthy and that's it so i have these three they are all dead while i was testing the last one that i was hoping will survive also died dead so so do not try buying this So all the money is wasted.
In this video, we are going to do the review and test of this, this 1500 watt boost converter with an input of 10 to 60 volts and output of 12 to 90 volts. We are going to test it with 90 volts, 1.5 kilowatt, 1500 watts, and also I'm gonna I'm gonna show you the efficiency at 1500 watt and we'll lower it. The input current cannot exceed 25 ampere. And the out at the output here, you cannot set the current the way that you want it. At this spot where my finger is, but let me turn. In this video, we are going to do the review of this 50 volts, 20 ampere Wurgi WZ5020L back converter. 20 ampere or one kilowatt. We are going to test it with different voltages up to 55 volts at the input and up to 20 ampere needs more current so the constant current is uh, turned on but we are not worried the input current 